Welcome back to another video, y'all. Yeah, yeah. 2024, baby. Uh, y'all haven't really seen my face as far as, you know, content-wise. But, guys, we're back. And uh, as you guys know, I've been playing Kakarot. I just finished the Bardock DLC. Um, you know, you have your gripe with me about it. You can talk about it, but I, I did not like or enjoy that. But, as always, leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new. We have some... Big news for Dragon Ball, and it, it, it would have been very stupid. I know I've been trying to hold back on the content. I haven't really been trying to oversaturate the market with the same stuff. You know, that's why I did Kakarot. But this is big. This is humongous for us Dragon Ball fans. And if you are a Dragon Ball fan, and if you are a Dragon Ball gaming fan, this matters to you as well. So Super Chronicles, who is a very notable... Uh, I don't even call him a leaker. 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 He's a reporter. Uh, very tangible. You only post the good stuff. Uh, DBS hype is more so I would say on the reliable leaker side. But aside from that little stuff, he posted about this. Um, obviously, our, our article uh, dealing with Akio Aoki Aoku. Sorry if I said that wrong. Who is now the president, or it was like, I think there was like in fights or talks, president of Capsule Corporation Tok Tokyo, executive producer of Dragon Ball series. Now, here we are. We can get right on into the actual part, right? So, Article 1 starts. And I've already, again, I've seen some stuff on this already, but I wanted to hold on on like actually reading it so I can get, do a video on it. And, um, Indomitable <laughs> Dragonable Dragon Ball. Indomitable, I said Dragon Ball. Indomitable Dragon Ball inheriting the mission, a global strategy to reach the next generation, featuring Akio Aoki. Aoku. Why do I keep Aoku? Aoku. Akio Aoku. Akio Aoku. We're going to get it right, right here on, on the recording. The president of Capsule Corporation Tokyo. Okay, again, so I think a few days before this or something like that, he got, you know, he, got, he was basically saying, like, he's now head of, like, you know, like, he's going to be running things, basically. And that's big news because, you know, Shueisha hasn't been... We've been in a drought of content forever. And it's just... For me, it's like, it's crazy. Because, you know, as being... Dragon Ball being such a big game... Man, that's that's sad for us, you know? It's real sad. Like, I, I got the hoodie on and everything. So, Dragon Ball will celebrate its 40th anniversary in 2024, which is this year. Again, happy 2024. If you're watching this, we made it through a week of 2024, so congratulations. Uh, Dragon Ball is a unique and amazing work. Is is a unique and amazing work, yeah. Rather than thinking of the work in relative or uniform terms, the keynote is to think about how it should be done as a work of art. As the executive producer of a work with unprecedented longevity, man, for real. My mission is to expand and convey what the original creator, Akira Toyama, has created. I will continue to produce works such as anime series, movies, and games at, over the next 10 years. Let's stop. Oh, hit my games. Let's stop right there, everybody. This is the part that we are kind of emphasizing right here, right? We're going to be getting content as far as anime, as far as movies, as far as games for the next 10 years. And I think that's what Sparking Zero is supposed to launch us into. I feel like Sparking Zero is, was their passion project project to say. And I ain't gonna lie, it will behoove them to drop it this year. Now, getting on into like when we were talking about the work of art and stuff, I really think that they are emphasizing, hey... We're taking a little step back here from all the recycled content. Let's keep it a buck. We got Broly movie and everything. We got Beast Gohan. But they're constantly bringing characters back. Uh, they're constantly, you know, bringing Broly, bringing Gohan. And it's, it's like, mm, it's like we don't really have a fresh kickoff for the next, especially for the next generation to get into. Because when you, even when you look at Super, it picks up on a very... Uh, awkward point it's like the, those who watch it are gonna have to like really really like go back and, and, and indulge in the original series which is always great but like i don't know they, they're trying to really tap into the next generation and sometimes you gotta do that without having to make them go back you know what i'm saying and so i really do think that they're going to be doing this and what i think they're going to do is creating a network 
across all games, movies, and platforms to try to like mend the the bond, mend weave the kind of weave the bridge and bridge the gap between the next generations, right? And so when we get into the next part, it says when the craze had died down. So there was a time when the Dragon Ball craze, which had spread around the world over the past 40 years, had died down. When I became the head of Shueisha's Dragon Ball Room in 2016, I could not visualize what was really happening. Seven to eight, seven to eight years ago, I went to a huge event in Brazil called CCXP. I was told that Japanese anime were popular in South America, but there was a discrepancy from what I was told. The feedback from the fans was weak. It was. It may have been at the peak of its popularity when it was on air in South America. So I think emphasis on South America being that a lot of more foreign countries like that, they love Dragon Ball. I remember hearing about stuff like uh, people had like Jumbo Trons. Like it was crazy when Dragon Ball Super was airing. It was crazy. And I heard a lot of these countries were booming with it, especially the U.S., especially. So I think that he's saying that going there is kind of like this, like, you know, you come from this like place of being all popping and good and you come back to the place, uh, you know, where you visited and it's and like nobody knows you. And it's like, it's like y'all don't, y'all don't remember us. Y'all don't remember we. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I feel like that's what they're saying. I feel like they're like, yo, Dragon Ball has lost their spunk. No, nobody's cheering for us anymore. What's going on? Why? This because there's no content. It's just And the thing is, I don't think it's more so that. That might be a different perspective. I think it's more so. Again, it just hasn't been content. Who, you know, a lot of people like Xenoverse. I love Xenoverse. Don't get me wrong. Thousand hours in that game, at least. But I am not gonna play it every day just because I love the game. You know, sometimes you get burned out by things, and not Xenoverse is not the only game. I mean, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Xenoverse is not the only Dragon Ball game. And you know, people get tired. People just get tired of the recycled things. And then even when you do drop a new game, sometimes it's recycled. So I get it. It's like everything has died down. I also thought it was the result of relying on old-fashioned zeal. Therefore, starting with the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie in 2018, we took steps took steps such as actively participating in events. I felt concerned that the Dragon Ball has that Dragon Ball has not not been expanded worldwide. Originally, I have, I disagree with that one. We'll get back to that. Originally, we didn't see the strength and diffusion power of the work. We need to take a closer look at this and see if we can do more. We are not looking for the one size fits all approach, but rather we are looking for events such as the Dragon Ball World Championships, the expansion of games, creating facilities, and anything else that we can do. We will work on them in parallel. Whoa. 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 That's. This is big. I don't know if anybody really is like emphasizing this. Let's read this again. Look, one size fits all, right? They're emphasizing that we are doing stuff in tiers. That's why you have, again, as I explained this into in a previous video, that's why you have Xenoverse 2 and stuff. You want to make your CAC breakers. You put yourself in an NPC. They, they're not just doing like battle. They're just trying to hit different tiers and, and build it on into a web. With that being said, they say, but rather we are looking for events such as Dragon Ball World Tournament. That's big. I think they're trying to, again, start their own, like, like Dragon Ball is big enough. They could have their own comp scene by itself. Like, not, not esports, not being featured at Com Com Capcom or whatever, Comic-Con or whatever, not being featured at nothing. They can have their own, like, team, like, you know, they can have that. They can have that. The expansion of games, again, expanding their games, starting with Sparking Zero, st again, starting with the Xenoverse 2 port. Like, they, they have been honestly trying to kickstart this for a minute. We just haven't really been quite seeing it because they've, they've needed, obviously, legal things to follow through. Creating facilities. They're gonna. We could probably be seeing some capsule corporations around the world just, like, stationed, like, literally, like, expand, like, they are looking to really, really put Dragon Ball, like plant Dragon Ball everywhere, on digital and in the meat, like everywhere. They they're really looking for it to do this. Never before, uh, let's see. What, oh yeah, never before was this was there such a simultaneous worldwide reception of anime. Mm, this is a big one. 
JJK. Anime like Spy of the Family, Hunter Hunter. I mean, those are not new, but like those have been really Attack on Titan. Those have been popping since like 2020 when COVID hit. Anime just said, Phew, everybody got on the wave, right? And they're right. 2018 was the last was the last thing we got for real from Dra- was Dragon Ball Super um, uh Burley movie, right? Isn't that the, like the last thing from Super? And then we get Super Superhero, right? Um, a couple years on the line. So, you get what I'm saying? Like, they're like, bro, we haven't been capitalizing off of this. People are interested in anime now. It's not corny anymore. <laughs> it's like, anime isn't corny anymore. Why are we? Why are we using this to 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 bo- like boost it even more? Drag- Dragon Ball is. As big as it is, as it is at a time where people didn't really like anime, especially like back in the day, and then it's booming some more out the, throughout the years with all the games that they featured, right? Because after Z, think about it, we didn't get nothing for years. After Z, nothing, nada. I, people were thinking that Dragon Ball was never coming back. People like me until like 2014 when it actually announced. So like, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so like, when you think about it in that perspective, he is literally speaking facts right now. He's like, bro. What have we been doing all this time? Anime is at its peak, and we, the biggest anime of all time, isn't doing anything. Let's continue. And I, I, this video is going to be long, but I want to really get my thoughts. It can be said that we are now able to do things that we had never ever, even considered before. Again, st- the stuff like what they already mentioned before, how I was emphasizing, they haven't considered that stuff. Shueisha have been BSing. They just been BSing from the beginning. I I began to think about the overseas expansion of Dragon Ball with Dragon Ball Daima, which will re- be released in fall 2024. And I don't care if you're hating on that. I'm excited for it. All right. I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see what it is about. If it's bad, it's bad. If it's good, it's good. Simple as that. There's nothing else to say about it. We are taking on the cha- challenge of creating an anime series with a completely original story. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you're bridging a gap, when you're bridging the gap between generations, you can't do moral art. They don't, people don't, half the people don't read manga and they don't know what it that is. They don't know what that is. You can call them out on it, whatever, but that's just not the general population. If you're going to do something like that, you have to take the same characters and put them in a position where it's a completely original story. That way everybody gets something new and that everybody can kind of relate. So it could be like, okay, well, I know these characters. But I know nothing about what's gonna happen here. I don't know these characters, and I don't know nothing about what's gonna happen here. You're one, up, you're one up on them, but at the same time, it, it balances itself out. If you guys see what I'm trying to go at, so they're trying to target that. So that's why I think they went back to to being kids. I think going back to being kids calls back to the old Dragon Ball and old Dragon Ball as we know it. They were they were kids. I don't think it's gonna be GT. Stop saying it's GT. I don't think it's gonna be GT at all. So. Getting on to this week, um, we are taking on the challenge of creating an anime series with a completely original story. Like I said, I am glad that all our works have been well received overseas. So, with that being said, regardless of what you guys think, it's been pretty well received. (laughs) Regardless of what you guys think, it's been pretty well received overseas, worldwide. People are accepting that Diamond is just going to be the next project, and we're going to see what it is. All right. Diamond was announced at New York Comic Con. Dragon Ball series is recognized around the world. Around the world, it makes no sense to announce it somewhere domestic. <sighs> Thank you. Comic Con is a great place to announce your work. People who understand the value of the culture are gathered there to begin with. And we chose Comic-Con because of its ability to spread our work throughout the world. It's like, it's like, it's like talking to an old person. It's like when an old person finally clicks, not him specific, specifically, but it's like Shueisha seemed like the, like an old group of people that's just like, you know, I, I, I think this way works. Like they've been advertising domestically heavily so much that we don't even get to to see what they're working on that's why we have to like rely so much on like leakers and stuff like that because we don't ever see anything else so now i think he's saying that they're going to be more open with projects like 
showcasing more things at more events like maybe we get might get some at maybe at every event we might see a dragon ball thing you know what i'm saying we, I, who knows uh comic-con they're emphasizing i think because you know comic-con is you know anime everything like anime comic books like literally that's what everybody gathers and they understand they completely understand this is what it is you know what i'm saying um getting all over overseas expansion is currently being considered as a necessary means of spreading the word about our work if we compare the flow of manga titles selling in book format and then finally becoming anime to a river the overseas developments were the ones that followed the river meaning that in the past it was a fan in the sense that the overseas expansion followed later I am convinced that Dragon Ball has pioneered many things as a Japanese anime. I have a sense of mission that if there is something that no one else has done, I must continue to challenge it. Literally. I think he's basically saying, look, we have one of the biggest IPs on our backs right now. We got to push some boundaries. We're playing it way too safe now. And I, I, this could be a good thing or a bad thing, guys. Playing it safe probably was working for them. If they get too ambitious we could see some really trash projects but at the same time i don't know every studio has that and maybe this might be their overhaul guys maybe dragon might dragon ball might go through an overhaul who knows who knows who's to say all these project projects he's, projects he's about to drop might be good like we don't know so it's like who's to say that this might be our time to really see a overhaul like a over change like a pivot in in the dragon ball we, are we you know are we seeing a pivot in our beloved franchise um the industry is over competitive it is tough to see the industry among anime due to emergence of streaming sites competition has become excessive we must not create a situation where manga becomes anime and when the manga is over, the content ends as it... Oh, my God. Thank you, bro. Thank you, bro. Because that's what's been happening. You get the manga. The anime starts. The anime catches up to the manga. The, the anime ends. Manga ends. Done. Nothing else. They have to wait for another manga. So it's like... You know what I'm saying? It. it he's trying to... I think what he's going for is more spin-offs is what, again, another thing that I've actually been hearing around. The ideal situation is to create, a, you know, where he says the ideal situation is to create a situation where the average viewer sees the content. We are in a cycle of consumption and in the some aspects, the cycle is becoming short-lived. I don't think it's good at all to have a boom that build up, builds up and then burns down, which can be a factor in the content not lasting long. It will be tough if we do not create a place to compete differently from an anime from anime as a content as content i'm not reading well uh -huh. it is advisable for works that are popular now to be distributed simultaneously around the world to repeat generations and reach the next stage of popularity this dude is basically saying look it's time to we cocked and loaded all right we gotta get we gotta get these things in the chamber and we just gotta start we just got to start putting out content. That's basically what he's saying. I, I'm really getting what he's saying. He's like, yo, I don't care what's going on right now. Right, right now, what we have that's perfected. Again, I'm not saying he's just going to throw out content. But he's going to line up a bunch of things that he knows that are finished, completed, and ready to put out. And when those things are lined up, shoot it out. Get This gets, this gets four months. And after that month, you get maybe get another four or six months. You drop something else. Another four or five months, drop a game. Uh, another five, six months, drop a movie. Uh, another another month, drop an anime. Spin off. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Tell a YouTube series. You know what I'm saying? He, I think that's what he's going for. Like, in between big projects, he's going to be like, all right, boom, 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 boom. All right? So we, so maybe we might, so for example, let's just put this, let's just put this in perspective, right? We get the moral arc. Big, right? That's big. Big umbrella, right? We get the moral arc, right? In between the moral arc, maybe uh, the manga for Super Just Finished uh, chapter, let's say the, let's say Goten and Chunks, the, the one they're about to do, Just Finished, right? Moral arc doesn't cover that, right? Boom, spin off, web series, Goten and Chunks, uh, da, 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 right? That's going on while moral arc is going on, right? 
boom. In between that, uh, the Xenoverse 2 DLC drop, boom, right there. That's content, boom, 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 boom. In between that, Sparky Zero, uh, update, something like that, boom. Uh, while while the anime is still going, right? The anime is still going. It's still go airing. You, uh, the the web anime dr already done. Make it short. You know, go to the trunks. Maybe to do a fusion or something like that. Boom, done. After that, wait a couple, wait a couple months, right? After that, in between, the, uh, maybe you take a break from Moro, drop a movie. Do y'all see? Do y'all see where I'm going right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, they just they they're gonna be putting out content after content, and I feel like. The way that I described it, I hope that they do it that way. Where it's just an arcing of a story going on, and then in between, they're just hitting you. Hitting you. Game. Movie. Game. Spin-off. Game. Movie. Update. Game. DLC. You know what I'm saying? You get it. You get it. Um, a leading role is needed. A leading role is needed in order for a producer to take on this role. They must transcend the boundaries of corporate organization. There must be someone who has a bird's eye view of the work and is in a position to say to the each company i think you should do this i push myself to be a catalyst for this through various dis, dis, oh discussions for japanese content to continue it is necessary to have someone who can say the status quo is not enough this is amazing guys it's amazing Basically, in that last part, he was saying, like, look, somebody, there's got to be an overseer, all right? There's got to be the guy in the chair, and I'm going to be the guy in the chair. And as the guy in the chair, I'm not just going to tell you what to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make suggestions, and I'm going to make sure I'm spreading the word from not only here to you, all the way overseas, making sure all the studios know what we want, making sure everybody's on par with what Dragon Ball is supposed to look like, with what... Akira Toriyama's vision is supposed to look like. Make sure everybody is on the same page. And I'm going to be the bird's eye view of that. That's what he's saying. He's saying, look, I got this. I got this, guys. That's what he's saying. Like, that, that's all I took from that. That's all I took from that. That is the end of the article. Um, phenomenal interview. Um, it, it, it Amazing. Again, by the reporter. Um... This is this is, again credits to this person, Sailor Jupiter, who uh sent who actually sent him the article. Um, yeah, this was amazing. This is amazing to read. I honestly am excited about what Dragon Ball is gonna be in the future. Man, Dragon Ball will be lit. And I, I honestly like again, like, you know, believe in what you believe in, pray for stuff like this, you know what I'm saying? I I I always, you know, hope that I get to a point in my content where I'm covering Dragon Ball content regularly and building a community out of it. So I again I appreciate you guys. We're launching 2024 into a new season. It's going to be lit. It's going to be lit. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you're new. Comment down below. I, I, I'm bringing it to you guys now. Comment down below. What do you guys think? What do you? What are some of your predictions coming from the new year? New year. Battle Hour is coming up. I would love to hear predictions on that. Y'all take care, man. Peace.